Hi friends and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to take secondhand finds along with my husband Chris and to make them over and share the process with you all here on our channel. So in today's video, if you are new viewer or you're actually somebody who's followed me for a long time, you know that I started off my channel black and white. Everything was black and white. So slowly over the last month or so, I have started to add color. The first one up is this little side table. Is this not so super cute? But that outdated green, the hunter green has to go. And so now I get to decide on what color I want to do with it. But then I also would like to give it some aged patina by actually using a texture additive and doing a little tin technique for you all. This little side table is just that press board, that pressed MDF board where you just screw it in together. So to make it look like it's a little bit more of a high end piece, first we need to do is cover up these screw holes. So I'm just going in with some wood putty and filling those in. You need to give this a good cleaning, but when it comes to MDF board, you don't want to saturate it. <laughs> so just a ringed out cloth. I just have some Dawn dish soap and some hot water just to wipe it all down. Get any residue that might prevent my paint from sticking off. Then to give it even more of an updated look, I'm going to go ahead and take these little knobbies off. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, they are super cute, but that kind of gives it that aged look and we want it to look a little bit more high end at the end. And then I quickly realized as soon as I started to use my Japanese saw to cut them off that if I just, um, actually gave them a little bit of tug to release the glue with the Japanese saw, I can just actually pull them off. And then for the ones that I pulled completely out or even the ones that I cut off flush, I'm going to go ahead with that same wood putty and fill those holes in. And then I just want to go in and hand sand with some 220 sandpaper, making sure that that is nice and smooth. I don't really want to use a power sander on MDF board because it just goes down quickly. And I'll take that same 220 sandpaper and I'm just going to scuff sand the rest of the body of this little table only to give that paint something to grab onto. Just wait, my black is actually just being used as a primer. I want to cover up that green paint. I want to seal in that MDF board with a good primer. And I also am, am going to take the time to tape off these drawers. I'm not going to worry about the side of the drawer right now. We will deal with that after I get my paint on there. But I'm going to tap tape off and put just, you know, your plastic grocery bag. Luckily, they fit right inside there to protect the rest of the drawer. So to give this little side table some texture, to give it that old look, I'm using the sea spray texture additive. So two scoops of sea spray, eight ounces of this little star yellow, you all. Oh, and what you do here is you get it thoroughly mixed up and it is going to be chunky, but you want it to be chunky because that's what's going to give that paint texture. And unlike painting where you're brushing it on you're actually just filling your brush up and you're doing a tapping motion and leaving those peaks and those ridges because when it's all dry that's what's going to give you that amazing chippy look so yes just a pouncing technique of putting it on And then I let it sit completely overnight and I'm taking some 
80 grit sandpaper seeing if I can just hand sand some of that texture off. So I'm testing the waters to see how easy it is to hand sand or if I need to go ahead and use one of my power sanders. It's actually not too bad and I mean it just it's amazing how quickly it actually sands off. To save on my hand, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a 220 sandpaper and then I'm going to use the power sander on the body of the side table. And I want some of that black to show through. The, th the, the hopes is that hopefully not much of the green will show through, but if, it's, if it does, that is a wonderful look. Just those layers upon layers of paint. I want it to look old and worn. So the texture is just amazing. I know it's hard to catch it quite yet on camera, but there's so much texture to this. I love how it sanded. Now what I want to do is go and give some of that texture age. I want it to pop out a little bit more. So I'm actually just using my watered down antiquing wax. Now I chose to use the fusion paint that has the paint, the primer, and the top coat in it so I don't have any worries about using anything watering taking my paint off so I'm just going to wipe on and then I'll go back in with a dry cloth and wipe off the excess so my watered down mixture is a pickle regular size pickle jar full of water a quarter cup of Waverly antiquing wax and a spoonful of Waverly's chalk ink top I want to give it a little bit more it's not quite, it's funny how one side, when you wipe it, will look one way and it brings out all the texture. But the top, when I wiped it, didn't quite bring out all that age that I was looking for. So I'm going back in with a very dry brush that I have some of the antiquing wax on and a little bit of the Jolie black wax. And I really want it to get in all those little creases of that yummy texture. said we roll back to this part where hey I didn't do that spray job I didn't overspray it and leave that green paint there but luckily it did sand off easily to make the side of these drawers a lot cleaner look I understand the distressed and aged look is not everybody's taste but as a creator I love playing with textures I love doing what inspires me in the hopes that when I share this with you all that it inspires you so paint color is always a personal choice and I love this yellow color and then toning it down I love it even more so now I'm adding some of these library poles back onto the drawers oh is this not going to make it look so high-end looked at somebody's face when you were picking things and I actually picked these up at an auction and when I grabbed them for the five bucks I know people's faces were like what <laughs> oh I'm never scared of what an item look like looks like I just can always see what it can become so to paint these up and get them more of a general use I'm going to go ahead and pop the spikes that would actually keep a wax candle on there um, I like to make them so that they're a little bit more versatile that you can actually put decor on them also now that I've caused a hole to be at the top, I'm going to go ahead and take some wood putty and fill in that hole. And also the paint is cracked at the bottom, which is going to be very obvious once I paint it a color. So I'll take the time to go ahead and um, fill in that also. Now this is 
this paint actually has its own texture going on as it is. So to scuff sand it a little bit and get some of that chippy paint off, I'm going to take my power sander and see how much of it I can get off. I don't mind texture at all, but I don't want it to be texture that is chipping that when I add a paint to it, that it's going to end up coming off. And I'm sure you wouldn't have thought there would have been that much prep work to a pair of candlesticks, but to get that good finish and a good product out, out there, it's worth taking the few minutes it takes to solve some problems. So now I'm just getting it cleaned off with some Dawn dish soap and some hot water, getting any residue that might be left behind that will prevent my paint from sticking. So let me know, those of you who are to use the Fusion Mineral Paint, do you love the French eggshell color as much as I do? Oh my goodness. The fun is of looking at a sample and trying to decide, okay, what do I think I would want? What items would I paint using this color? And candlesticks, oh yes. I've actually done a pair of candlesticks and they didn't last long in my booth already with this French eggshell color. The nice thing about the mineral paint, if you were new to this, um, is it's got the primer, the paint, and the top coat all in one. Now your first coat will go on and it'll look a little bit transparent here and there, but just like any paint, two colors. Uh, it's a miracle if you get a one coat coverage on anything. <laughs> but so yes, the first coat will go on, the second coat will make it all yummy. It is just, for me, um, it's the nice step of not having to prime all the time, not having to put a um, top coat on there, you know, not having to have three different product, project, products to paint an item. And yes, that first, first coat does go on pretty smooth. It is so creamy and there's always those pieces and parts that you miss. So now I'm going in with my second coat, just finishing it all up. One thing that I always do to take some time to do is clean off my bottom. I don't take usually take the time too often to tape it off, but especially if it is wood on the bottom where I know that I can go ahead and sand off any of the gooped, gooped over paint, it's just nice to have a nice finished clean edge um, for something that you're reselling to a buyer. As much as I love Waverly's Antiquing Wax, which is always very brown and very dark, I do love Fusion's Antiquing Glaze. Yes, two different products here. This is actually a lot more liquidy at, at the wax. Somebody asked me the difference. So just like before, you know, with any kind of wax, you just wipe it on and then you wipe it off. It is not as thick. It's a little bit more watery. It's got a little bit longer dry time, but oh my gosh, it sticks in those crevices and just gives some amazing age to a piece. to walk, come across pieces that are just crying to be made over like these three though you know I'm always a black fan but they just look so cheap <laughs> they yeah so they need a lot of help I love when they're three-tiered but they're these are not there's two of the same and one's taller but I know that I can give these a much more high-end look. So first of all, unfortunately, <laughs> the hardest part of this whole thing was because the paper from the candle that was put on there was stuck, <laughs> stuck to it. Um, but with a little bit of a heat gun and some patience, I did get that label taken off. Then I don't know if it's showing up or on camera. I can definitely feel like these needed to be sanded. They are just rough and textured. They're just, if you would dust them, they're cloth grabbers, cobweb, um, dust bunnies. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and take the time to try to smooth down some of these areas. Yet again, I like texture, but I don't like an item that I feel like I'm going to get a splinter off of. As I was sanding on them, I'm like, oh, these are held together with brad nails, which, um, yeah, you can see every hole the brad nail went into. So I'm going to take that wood spackle again, and I'm going to fill in those holes. Now 
now for these, I'm going to go ahead and use the Bell Wood Color by Fusion. Now, it looks gray in the can itself, but it actually has a little bit of a hue of a green, kind of like a khaki color, but it is a nice, rich color. And I love the little um, way that I know that this black from underneath that it'll be fun to distress these candlesticks because that that black and that bell would really go well together. does have a slight green hue to it so I really do love it so when I saw these I knew that I could put some of these wood rounds on the top of them and it would just take them to the next level and they're actually a perfect perfect fit for the tops of these and I actually pick mine up at Joanne Fabrics because they're actually cheaper than the ones at Hobby Lobby um, because they're under the price where Hobby Lobby doesn't put them on sale. So yes, uh, that's where I get my wood rounds from, though I wish there was some other way they didn't have to put a sticker on them, but you know, it is what it is. Now they're already in the round shape, but they are unfinished. That means there's nothing on them, no stain, no top coat, no, nothing like that, and they are not sanded. So they actually do need to be sanded, and it always seems to leave that sticky residue behind. So I'm going to just go ahead and sand it off, especially at those edges that are really rough in um, our catchers also. I have them all sand and dusted. I want to give them a little bit of color. So I'm just going to actually use my watered down Waverly Wax mixture, which is a regular size pickle jar full of water, a quarter cup of Waverly's antiquing wax, and a spoonful of the Waverly Black Chalk paint ink so that's why it looks a little bit more dark brownish black but it kind of gives it that aged barn wood look my initial plan i was going to actually sand these down and bring some of that black through but once i got um, my tops done i'm like oh i think that that matches really well to this antiquing glaze. So I changed my mind. Do y'all do that during a project to what your original plan is? Sometimes it shifts just how a project is turning out. about using the antique wax mixture on those unfinished pieces that you need to let it dry before applying a top coat to seal it in. If you apply it while it's still wet, you will get a cloudy look. To attach the rounds to the candlestick itself, I'm going to use some tight bond wood glue and then I'm also going to use some brad nails. I think it looks to me that it is touching, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to add a couple brad nails to the top to make sure that it's good and secure. So I cannot believe that Dollar General has these little cement birdies again, though it was almost like a challenge for us crafters, the colors that they made them. It was almost like, yeah, we know you're going to paint them, so we're going to have some fun with the colors ourselves. So yes, we are going to paint up some of these birdies for the season. I mean, a dollar. I want to keep these pretty neutral, so I'm just going to be using the Fusions Victorian Lace to paint them up. Though the fun of the smaller items getting the bottom and the top and the whole thing. but And you would think that as the, the cement that it would just soak it in. It, I mean, it does a little bit, but um, yeah, so I'm going to have to do like, you know, four different segments here so I can do the top and then I can do the bottom and vice versa and get my two coats of paint on here, making sure that I get it into all those little detailed areas of these birdies. 
fun of these birdies having all that detail is now what wax do I put on? But I'm going to stick with my theme. I've done black. I've done the gray with the white wax. But it's fun of having new products in a new year is I'm just going to stick with that same antiquing glaze and see how this turns out on these little birdies. So wipe on, get it into all those detail areas, and then wipe it off. So what did you think? Yes, colors. Uh, yes, Ginger Chick is adding colors. Oh my goodness, yes. Um, but I have to love them. You know, part of making items over is you can't force it. You cannot force doing something because you have to love what you're working on. If you're just like, oh my God, I just hate, hate, hate looking at this color. You can't force it, y'all, you know, especially when you're a reseller. And I'm not ever going to do something just because it's a trend and because somebody said it's the new hottest, latest. I need to feel it. I need to feel inspired to work with it. And it's its time. So now I'm testing out. I can't get my paint that um, that I always got before. Um, so yeah, I needed to broaden my horizons and I'm so thankful that Vonda hooked me up with some of the fusion paints and I absolutely love it that it has a paint, a primer, and a top coat in it and then I am done. Well, kind of, because you know, you could still do some kind of a technique on it and I absolutely love the sea salt. I will spend the money because I know I can achieve the look. I tried every version of coarse salt and never could achieve it wasted time, wasted energy on things that just didn't work. And that sea salt in the bag, I know it's a little bit pricey, but it worked. It worked, y'all. So again, thank you for watching today's video. Give me a quick comment uh, which of the colors I used today, excluding that bright yellow, <laughs> were your favorite um, colors that I tried today. Are you a Fusion fan? I highly recommend it. My gosh, I am still working on the same white can white bottle that I've had from the original of testing this out. So wow, y'all. So a little bit goes a long way and it just, the coverage is amazing. So again, thanks for watching today's video guys. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and you're checking out this channel for the first time, yes, I started off black and white and now I'm adding colors slowly, baby steps, baby steps into my DIY crafts and making over secondhand finds. So again, thanks for watching guys. And you, we will see you next time and you can see what we're up to. Bye.